every day, late at night. It's stage two. I start the Rhein Radweg Eurovelo 15 cycle route from the Oberalp Pass and a map in Switzerland to Bregenz, Austria. 171 kilometers. Good morning, everybody. Look at my breakfast. How wonderful this looks. This has just been brought to me by the lady. Egg. Cheese and meats, cake, orange juice, look at that. Wow, I'm looking forward to that. She also brought me some other news, which is that the Gothard Pass is closed for the winter. Oh, I did research it and I, and I wasn't sure. I think it's opening in the next few days, but right now it's closed. So um, that means a bit of a change of plan. I'm gonna to have to catch the train from here, the Rolo, which takes me up to Andermatt and the Oberalp Pass. So um, that gets me out of a bit of climbing. That's disappointing because that is a classic climb and I really wanted to do it. Looking out the window, I can see the snow covered mountains. That's actually not that high, that snow line. So I can sort of understand that uh, the Gothard Pass is closed for the winter. It's probably still covered in snow. I had a fantastic night's sleep, very comfortable and snug. Right now I don't feel that inclined to leave the bed and breakfast. So I'll have my breakfast and give you an update in a bit. So unfortunately because the passes are closed, I get a legitimate excuse to catch the train. Thank you. That was a, a very good experience, very, very helpful staff. Of course, they all speak very good English, but then there's also Italian and German, and uh, everybody's been really helpful and a very efficient train service. The Oberalp Pass lies east of the town of Andermatt, Switzerland, climbing to a summit of 2,043 metres. This is the source of the Rhine River, starting at the Oberalp See, a small lake which nestles in the mountain col, still heavily frozen at this time of year. Over the pass, the road descends rapidly. This is the beginning of the Eurovelo 15 route, otherwise known as the Rhine Cycle Route, heading east towards the town of Chur. In Switzerland, it closely follows the national route Radweg 2. The early descent is technical on alpine roads and requires the rider to be alert. I was so pleased that I'd replaced my brake pads on my carbon rims as they were heavily used to arrest my acceleration. The road slowly flattens and widens after about 10 kilometers, which rewards you with less stressful riding, taking full advantage of gravity, riding the route as it curves its way down the north side of the valley until the town of Lantz, where it switches to the south side of the valley. Well, I'm at Vandas, I don't know what's happened. I've come off the road, descended down some dirt tracks, and I'm now in the middle of nowhere over the Rhine River. I've only got about 25 kilometers to go to Char, or Shah, 
but the computer is saying it could take me nearly two hours and that's because it's dirt and gravel tracks which I'm just not equipped to uh, to take on morale low yeah and of course it's also raining having missed the directions to cross over the valley floor at Lance I had to navigate my way up the abrupt climbs on the south side of the valley to rejoin the route towards Bonadas. The rain added to my discomfort and reduced my braking ability even further. After the provincial town of Chur, the route became almost exclusively a cycle route, away from the roads, heading north and out of the Alps. There it is, folks. Rhine River. The route closely follows the Rhine River, making navigation from this point a cinch, and allowed me to settle into a comfortable tempo rhythm. The route surface was, for the most part, ultra smooth tarmac, and without the traffic, it was a cyclist's dream. Passing through Liechtenstein without event, the river eventually enters the Bodensee Lake on the border of Austria. Over the last 40 kilometers or so, there was hardly an interruption without towns, shops or turnings. The surface in the final few kilometers upon entering Austria changed to a compacted crushed gravel or cinder, perfectly adequate for riding on, if not totally ideal for narrow tires. Another hard day in the saddle, folks. I've done 150 kilometers. I've come through Liechtenstein. That kind of came and went. Didn't register at all. Over that side of the river is Austria. And this side of the river is Switzerland. I've got about 25 kilometers to go to where the river enters the Bodensee or Lake Constance. And I'm hoping to find a campsite there. Fingers crossed, the sun's gonna come out and hopefully I'm gonna dry off a little bit. Oh yeah, the other thing, the, um, the track has turned into this sort of cinder crushed gravel. The river enters the Bodensee Lake on the border of Austria, where I decided to camp at the town of Brigentz. I'm at my camping place. It's called Vice Camping or White Camping. I've got my tent up pretty quickly. It's my Zephyrus One, and I'm trialing out my new sleeping mat. It's my Sea to Summit. I've also trying out my new pillow, which is a Trekology pillow. And I've got my Three Seasons Mountain Warehouse down sleeping bag. I'm feeling pretty tired, I've got to tell you. I've done 170 kilometers today and I've reached Austria. I'm right on the edge of the Bodensee or Lake Constance, if you prefer the English name, which is just over the trees there in that direction. Just look at the state of the bike already. It's only day two, absolutely filthy, as I am. The camping place is costing me 18 euros, which is very nice, and the nice lady also gave me a welcome gift of a schnapps, so I'm gonna have this. <laughs> Off to the toilet, we'll get washed up, go and get something to eat. Cheers. <laughs> 